Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Chronicles of Mystery. And we are once again joined by Kiana Blackwell. I'm Mr. P. I'm so glad to be able to have this conversation. Um, looking forward just to seeing how you're doing overall, seeing how we are on two coasts and we don't get to see each other as often as we did when we were teaching the same building. And also knowing how this year is a bit different, seeing how your role in education has changed. So first and foremost, how are you, Kiki? I'm good. I'm so good and happy to be back on here with you. Nice. We're, we're glad to have you back. Um, so if you could, once again, for those who may not know, what is your role now this year? I am the special services coordinator at a middle school here in Connecticut. Excellent. Excellent. And for most of the years that you were teaching, what uh, subject did you teach? Uh, seventh and eighth grade science. Awesome. And how has this year um, been a little bit different from you? Or what have been like, I, I guess, yeah, just the differences for um, you in this uh, academic year? So aside from being at a different school, it's still like a lot of the same, but, you know, a whole set of different kids from a different city. Um, and so like with that aspect, that part is different. Um, but just the role overall is completely different from my entire education experience. Um, for me, I am so used to the lesson plans, the science lab materials, the grading, all of those things that I have to make sure is like ready and set to go to where like on the complete opposite end, like I have none of those worries. Yes, I still have plenty of work to keep me busy, but I'm able to kind of like keep my own schedule, um, go at my own pace without like someone sort of like looking over my shoulder. Did you do this? Did you do that? You need to be here at this point. And so, and that aspect is completely different than like the day-to-day -day science schedule. You have this period, this period, this uh, plans due by this date, like it's completely different. And how would you say your overall, I guess, uh, well-being is compared to when you were physically in the classroom and like you were just mentioning the lesson plans and the this to that correct the this to that um it is definitely definitely like helped my mental health my well-being my sustainability like i i was so used to the craziness of like just what it was in my last position at my last school that I normalized it. And I just thought that that's what working in a school needed to be and was going to be. Um, and so it's just, I have none of that stress that I used to have. Um, it, it's completely like a whole new world, honestly, a whole new world. Now knowing where you are, um, and knowing that last year you were in a, you were in a different role, like how do how do you how are you able to like help the teachers that are at your school serve those teachers serve the kiddos so that you know that stress that you are familiar with the stress that you don't have now that that's not sort of being like heaped onto them. Does that make sense to the question that I'm asking? Yeah. So I okay. am mostly responsible for three learning specialists. It's supposed to be four, but it's currently three learning specialists, and so. Mm -hmm. um, just letting them know that like I was right there with you like months ago. And so I completely understand even a science teacher. I'm like, I go to the eighth grade science teacher's room all the time and I'm just listening to what she's doing, just helping the kids. And I'm just like, I was just there. And so like everything you're doing is still familiar to me. And like, when I have something to say, I step in. If they're like, this thing is wrong. I'm like, yeah, it's wrong. You should say something. Like just letting them know, like, while I'm like, headed towards their leader role, I'm still like very connected to where you are. My learning specialists know they can come to me for anything. Um, I have one in particular, she's like, I wanna be where you are, what do I need to do? And I'm just like giving her all of the advice. There, She's like apologizing to me for bringing me her, like this thing is bothering me. I'm like, that is literally why I'm here to make your job easier. Like anytime you have a problem, come and tell me, I, I'm not gonna be upset. I'm gonna do whatever I can to like, relieve whatever it is in whatever way I can because I know exactly where you are and like I felt that way without the person to say like hey let me do something about it and so like let me be that person to do whatever I can to fix whatever it is and so just reminding them that like you know hey I'm connected I know what you're going through I'm there with you 
And like, I'm here, I'm on your side. That's dope, that's dope. I am pausing to just let that sit because it's so nice to have folks in leadership who were in the classroom and not so long ago that they remember and know that feeling of you're trying to juggle or accomplish, let's say five things. And it just feels like you're only going to get one done and to, and to be told like, that's okay. <laughs> like, I understand mm -hmm. why you may want to get these five things down, but being able to finish this one thing, do this one thing correctly is, is also pretty, um, is pretty dope. So I'm happy to know that those folks have, and, and to know that you too, you have, you know, that feeling, you know, that look to go into a classroom and like, I remember, <laughs> I remember mm -hmm. what it was like to, to be here. So yeah, that's pretty dope. What, what's been something that uh, has been like surprising in a good way in regards to uh, the new role that you're taking on? Um, I'm finding myself speaking up a little more, which is like one of the things I wanted to do. I'm still not where I want to be in that um, space, but like, mm -hmm. because I have to advocate for myself and for the learning specialist, I'm like finding myself learning to do that more. Um, and like being more comfortable when I'm like just saying certain things I'm finding, I was always one to like mention when I didn't know how to do something or just, I'm just like speaking up like there I'm learning in this role and I'm like telling people every day, like I'm new, I'm here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I can. Um, just like the level mm -hmm. of vulnerability that I'm willing to like, just put out there. I just never imagined myself doing that simply because I'm just so used to like trying to be so unseen and like just show up mm. and do what I can do. Like I'm used to being in the role and knowing everything about my curriculum and all that stuff. So whereas now I'm like in a completely new building with completely new people, they're trusting me to do this thing, coming to me for answers and like just yeah. being able to say like, you know what? I actually don't know. I'll find out where I was kind of worried yeah. about feeling like I needed to know everything and I needed to have an answer. So just a level of vulnerability and like feeling comfortable and saying like, hey, I got this or hey, I don't know. Let me see. And then I'll get back to you when I can. And, and when you are when you are demonstrating that, does that thing get reciprocated back to you of like teachers saying like, oh, I don't know or other colleagues saying I don't know? Or is it just like um, Kiki's the only one who's, <laughs> who's sharing? <laughs> in in some ways, I recently had a question to my principal, and she's fairly new as well. And she was just like, "I don't know. I'm gonna find out to you and get right back to you." And so, like, hearing her say she doesn't know, like, again, you expect mm. the principal to know everything, but again, she's also new, fairly new in her role. All and right. so, like, just knowing that people understand like that we all don't have the answers. And like, when I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna figure this thing out. And they're like, thank you so much. And still very like accepting and like, okay, thanks. No problem. Or like, I get it. Like I haven't run into anything where someone's like upset because I didn't have an answer or the answer that they actually want in the moment. Cool. 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 Because I, I know, you know, we've had admin who, or folks who are in positions of leadership who just seem to like, they have all the answers. Uh, they never want to, or it didn't seem as if they wanted to admit that, Hey, I don't know, or this is something mm -hmm. that's above my pay grade and let me go <laughs> check. Um, so to hear that that is something that you are, you are embodying and that you're demonstrating for your, for your, for your team is, is, is dope to hear. Um, yeah. thinking about like prior to recording and thinking of, uh, like our conversation, what is your stress level like? Like, how are you? Because for a lot of us, we know October is what we like to call Shocktober. That the folk, the kiddos, come out of their shells. They're they're comfortable, and so it becomes this moment where, like, teachers who are not familiar with the full arc of the year, it's like, ah, where did this come from? Um, mm -hmm. And this is that month where it's like, oh snap! But what's what what are you experiencing right now? Um. So with that, before that, I. I will never forget you telling me about October is the hump to get over. And like, I literally tell people that to this day, 
Like I still use that because it puts everything into perspective of like, this is where we are. This is all we got to do. This is what we got coming up. And so like, I still hold on to all of that that you taught me. Um, Mm -hmm. But like the stress level is, I'm telling you, like, I feel like the stress that I have now, or I would even say stress because it's not real stress, but it's like the normal Mm -hmm. level of what it should be compared to like nice what i've experienced and normalized like i i just i don't even know how to put it into words like it's unreal that i have like i lack the stress that i've normalized for so long um i i think a lot of it is for sure i was no longer happy in the classroom and so like still knowing like what I was used to, how I was used to performing and like all that goes into it and just not wanting to do that was also causing the stress. Yeah. Plus trying to do that and support a lot of like newer teachers on my team and things like that. Excuse me. I was like adding stress onto myself. Whereas now it's kind of like if I want to go into this classroom, like for the science teacher, for example, if I want to go in there and just hang out and help, I can. If I don't want to, I don't have to. And so, like, a lot of the stress I was putting onto myself, I don't have to because I don't have to go in and do all of the extra things that I was doing. Um, I don't know if I answered the question, but the stress is just nowhere near where it was. No, definitely. I think you definitely did. And one of the things that I heard was, like, adding on or taking on certain things is adding stress. And I think early on in a lot of teachers' careers, the ability to say no to certain things, the ability to say like, this is too much. Like I have a bandwidth of being able to do X, Y, Z and do X, Y, Z well. And anything more than that is going to make everything a little less than. And Mm -hmm. you just being honest about like the joy of being in the classroom of knowing like, Hey, my time here is no longer enjoyable. Therefore, rather than be here and be unhappy or stressed out and for the kiddos also to be, having a teacher that's unhappy and stressed out to be able to recognize that, acknowledge that, be able to, for that to sit well and then say, okay, I need to move on or go elsewhere. I think it's something that, um, I know I struggle with it. I know about the year that we won't speak of that. A lot of that was just like me questioning just like reality myself as a teacher and educator. And man, like, is it me? Is it what? And so, Hearing you say that is just, I think is going to be very validating to a lot of people. So I think mm-hmm. you definitely answered the question. Okay. Yeah. Because I definitely felt that like guilt of leaving, like, how can you leave? Like, this is where you've been. Mm. This is like home. And like, it was definitely hard to walk away. And then having like such strong attachments to not so much the kids. Cause again, eighth grade, they were leaving, but the, the teachers yeah. and the like real friendships that I created there and it, they were like, of course wanting me to be happy but like are you sure this is what you want to do and then like Mm -hmm. literally everything they threw at me i was like no that's not enough for me to stay and do it again and so like to like make that step and like go ahead and like stick with it and then hearing them say like i'm so proud of you for you know sticking up for yourself and like going through because so many people say you know i would say i quit all the time just I'm like just saying it, but like to actually have action behind it is just when you know, you know, and like, I had never thought about what knowing felt like, but I knew that I was like, this is it. Like, this is the feeling that I knew would be when it was time to go. And like, I just trusted it and went with it. And like, I do not have a regret at all. Like, I know for a fact, I made the the best decision I could have. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of, uh, pressure we put onto ourselves as well as a pressure from the outside as well of like, you've got to be in the classroom. And if you're not, Oh no. Um, but also like something you just said of like, you knew the feeling. And once you felt that, whatever that feeling was to say like, all right, that's it. There's nothing anyone's going to be able to say to me. That's going to change my mind or make me choose not to, to, to take this decision, make this choice and like, and, and stick to it. So that's, you're commended for that. You're, you're, you're awesome for that. And I'm sure whenever, I think the more folks see that, 
then they too, whenever that moment comes or if that moment comes for whatever reason, they're like, we have a living, breathing example of uh, Ms. Blackwell, Keanu, who did the thing and is doing the thing well. So that, that encourages them, I'm sure, to, to do the same too, if that is something that they're feeling. So props to you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. For sure. In your, in your new role now, do you see yourself um, like mentoring? Because I know you, you have folks that you're working with, but are you seeing yourself like mentoring even folks who are not necessarily um, directly, like say, I don't know what the word is, but reporting is like the word that comes to my mind. <laughs> Um, not really. I yeah. like the, the eighth grade science teacher whose class I go into, she's also been doing that for a while. And so I just, I haven't really felt needing to, um, the social worker, she, um, mm. she, I'm technically her coach. And so like, because I worked with her before and just know her more on a personal level, uh, I'm not like helping her in her social work aspect because that's not my like expertise but just on a like professional level and like just advice Mm -hmm. and that sort of um that sort of lens maybe but not so much like in the classroom or in in any other type of role like that for anyone got it got it if you were to think of and the year is still young the top two or three things that you've really enjoyed in this new role, what would those two or three things be? It could be as something as simple as I get to take a sip of coffee. I get to go to the restroom whenever I need to. I don't have to call for backup. (laughs) (laughs) What would those two or three things be? Yes. Like some, I didn't know how to put that into a thing, but yes, like the, the freedom (laughs) of like, I can come in in the morning. I don't have to like, check for copies, check for materials, make sure I have this ready. Like my mind is so much freer. Like I just show up and I can sit down and say, let me look at my schedule for the day. I can move things around. Um, I have this meeting, I can't do this. They need me to step in and do this. Um, And then once the buses roll out, I can literally just walk away without saying, is this all set for tomorrow? Do I have to go do this? That email can wait until the morning. Like. Just that sense of freedom is top one, <laughs> if not one and two, <laughs> but top one. Um, nice. And then another thing I think, which I kind of just thought as I was speaking, in this school, they respect my role as my top priority. And so like when other things, they need someone for something else, they understand that like, no, Kiana can't do that. Like, don't even ask mm-hmm. her. Like. When I, in the summer, I was speaking with the office coordinator and she was like, so yeah, I know this is your role. I'm really connected to this bed role. And like, just telling me how she supports that role just because of her own personal um, history with it. And she yeah. was like, are you teaching as well? And I was like, no, I don't have to. She was like, good, because I was going to go to the principal immediately and tell her no. And so like, mm. it's just, not what I'm used to. Like I'm used to have right. being this, 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 and this. And if you still have free time, can you do this as well? Whereas now it's just like, right. this is your full-time role. This is what you need to prioritize. Do this first. If you have any time to do anything else that you want to offer, fine. But like, this is where we need you. This is where you need to focus. And like, that was the one thing I wanted the most was to have one job where I can put my all into one thing and not have to say... Yes, I'm a science teacher, but I need to make sure my grade team meeting is all set. I need to make sure I have my plans for supporting ELA later. I need to make sure I'm ready Mm -hmm. to do this later. Like I know my one role and I get to like really truly do that one thing. And then whatever else time I have for anything else, I'll jump in and support if I can. But if I can't, I can't. Is, Is this also the school that you're at now? Is it a charter school? Mm-hmm. It's the same charter. It is? It's the mm-hmm. same charter. Same charter. Mm-mm-mm. Same mm-mm-mm. charter. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> All right. All right. The reason why I ask that is because in having conversations, it 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 really is about the people 
in the building and how they view and, and how they enact it. Cause you could view it one way, but if you're not living the life, then it's going to yes. show in the, in your actions because mm-hmm. having that conversation of public versus charter versus private slash independent, like they're all different, but they're all schools looking to serve kiddos. And it really is mm-hmm. all right. What are the adults in the building doing to ensure yeah. that those kiddos are getting the best, the best, um, whether it be mm-hmm. the best teachers, the teachers that they have who are, 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 who are new, who are then going to be trained, who are then going to have those living embodied examples of like this, these are best practices so that they can then replicate that with their own, um, flair to it, if you will. But yeah, mm-hmm. to hear that it's the same charter, yet those extras are not being added on to each person or not being added, added on to you is like, all right, so it can be done. Mm-hmm. So when it wasn't being done, that was more of, hey, that particular admin didn't prioritize that mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Right. I also think That's a lot of it too is like where I was, they knew me. I had been there and they knew that like, yes, she can do that. She can do this. She can do this too. And so they leaned into this, mm-hmm. whereas now they don't like necessarily know all of that. And so why would they think to say, Hey, can you do this too? That's part of it. But it's, it's yeah. most importantly, like before I even came, the principal made it very clear. Like if for something, some strange reason, we have no one else to cover and no one else to do anything. And we may need you to do this one thing one day we'll ask, but like, no, that's not your priority. That's not why you're here. Like this role, we need someone to fill it. We haven't had someone consistent. Like this is what we need you for. And so she made it very clear that that's why I was there. And like, I felt that. And like, as I'm here now, she's like living up to all of the things she said. When she made that clear to you, was that something that was just like verbally articulated to you? Was that something in writing? Um, It it was verbally, because, you know, like the, the contracts don't like state anything like that but like yeah it was um just verbally in the like initial here's what this role looks like here's how i would ex- here's what i expect of you from this role just that mm-hmm. sort of like small talk of like what it is okay i asked that because that's something that i wondered because we've all at least i only speak for myself a lot of things have been said Hmm. And me, you're like, all right, I'm going to take you at your word. You say X and then X doesn't come to fruition or it's just like a partial mm-hmm. X, which then makes me like, look at you sideways and be now the type of person who's like, Hey, can you just shoot me an email with that in it? So I know that mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. crazy when we talked about such and such and such. So to hear that this, this principle, this leader said X and is holding their word to X is it's like, mm-hmm. it's refreshing. And to know that it's a person in that charter school world, um, yeah, that's in, in, yeah. refreshing and props to, to, to that, to that leader. Yeah, good mm-hmm. for them. It's just, just for you as well to, oh, my bad, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's just crazy to me how different the environment of the school is though, to know that it's the same <sighs> thing. And like, there's some things that are like, well, we used to do this a couple of years ago. We got rid of it, but they're doing it here. And it did it. It's just. I don't know how to explain it, but like the systems that we had in place that we fought to get rid of, I got there yeah. and they were doing it. And I was like, Ooh, I don't know how, th- I don't know how I feel about this. Um, and like to see it like just going and I'm like, well, maybe if we did it this way, maybe it would have had this effect because like the behaviors are different. It's middle school. So there's still middle school hmm. behaviors, but like the, they're not school, at yeah. the level that I was just so used to that. It's like, I'm still trying to figure out why certain things are so different with the same system. Like that part, I haven't wrapped my hmm. head around yet. Cause I'm like, I don't, we had a fire drill, our first fire drill and like the alarm went off. We went in the hall and I was like, it's quiet. Kids are quietly walking. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Like, of course you had the one or two who's trying to like whisper to their friends and like, try to hide the speaking, but like, I'm like, what? I don't know why certain things are different when it should be the same, but it's, it's not. And I can't figure it out. I can't. 
it's a to that I would ask like why is it that you can <laughs> there are certain teachers who can go into a classroom and you see the kiddos behaving in a way that you wish all kiddos would behave like teachers teaching they're having a conversation they're going about the subject everyone's on task it seems like kids are, mm-hmm. are engaged and then see those same group of kiddos in a different classroom different subject and you're like what in the world is happening mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like there are new, there's a number of factors to that one it's the, obviously the the subject not everyone is going to be excited about math or not everyone will be excited about science in the same way not everyone will be excited about literature or um whatever. So we, we know that that plays into it, that that's a variable in the equation. However, it's like, it shouldn't be a night and day. It shouldn't be like so dramatic that who you are, how you behave from one class to the next is totally like night and day until you're like, Mm -hmm. Oh, there are certain things that this teacher does or doesn't do. Yeah. That, that contributes to that. And so I wonder Mm -hmm. like, the leadership, the teachers who are already at that school, who are, who may have been doing the same things that we were like, yo, this is not working. And it's like, hmm, why was it not working? What was it about leadership teachers, whomever that these kiddos are just like, yeah, we're not about this. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, it's not that I have an answer to it. I'm just mm-hmm. posing the question like yourself of like, Yo, there we're you're now seeing X being done with this group of kiddos and it seems to be working well. Why was it not working for there? And it's it's this question of like Yeah, why? <laughs> and I don't have the answer to that. Uh, yeah. I'm like because you know, Fran worked with us at the last school and so she also before I went there, I asked her, like, is it the same? What's different? And she also said, like, no, they're not the same. The kids are different. Yeah, Mm. they have their moments and their things, but the kids are very different. And I'm just like, okay. So, like, she kind of, she told me, but it still was like, I'll just see it when I get there. And, like, I I don't know. Like, of course, kids are not all the same, but I'm like, it's the same charter, the same kind of kids. Like, I just expect it more of the same, and it's just nowhere near the level and like even the like bigger moments that happen are still like i mean it's big but like i've seen way bigger and i think a lot of it too is like a lot of the small stuff they sweat the small stuff and whereas i would have been like a just stop and move on because i don't have time for Mm -hmm. the small stuff they like stop and sweat the small stuff to prevent it from getting bigger. And so then it's like, well, should we have just been sweating all those little things that I overlooked? Because look look at what happens when the small stuff is sweat and like mm. preventing the bigger things, like big things still happen, but like it's just big things were always happening all of the time so that we were like those little things, we didn't have time. And it was just like, hey, your head's down, it's quiet let me just keep going because while you got your head down and it's quiet, I'm going to just do whatever else. Whereas now it's like, no, Mm. pick your head up. Let's keep going. And like, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's It's so different. (laughs) (laughs) It's different. Well, one thing I I'm happy that is not different is just to hear like that joy in your voice, that chuckle, that happiness (laughs) is, is something that I know. um, Even though we were never, in the same like cluster of deaths together. Like that was something that was always enjoyable to hear. Just like a lightness and airiness of like, all right, Kiki's doing well. So, which is mm-hmm. it's nice to, to hear more of that uh, in, in your voice. Cause yeah, I, I ain't got to say it. We all had those moments where it's just like, mm-hmm. yo, yo. <laughs> so to hear that yeah, is nice. And particularly to hear that, at this point in the in the year in October is is it's definitely nice to hear. So I'm glad for you. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm and I think the thing that I'm taking away from this conversation is one of knowing knowing yourself to know when you gotta pivot. Um, knowing yourself well enough to know that 
if it's not bringing you joy the way that it used to, um, yeah, it's, it's okay to change. And also being able to work with individuals who, when they say X, X is actually executed to know that, Hey, I'm not going to put more on your plate. Um, that I'm, if this is your task and I need you to do this really well for the sake of our kiddos, then that's all you got to focus on. It's not on Mm -hmm. everything is not a priority. Just this one thing is a priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I will definitely be checking in with you again just to see how the, yes. the course of the year is going. I, I thank you very much for taking your time out, um, spending a couple minutes with uh, with me to have this convo and for the benefit of whoever is is hearing this. So thank you very much, Ms. Blackwell. Listen, I told you when I said anytime, I meant anytime. Look, we're used to folks saying X and X being like halfway there. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm right. also learning of like, <laughs> of like, wow, she's, mm-hmm. she's, she's a real one. She said X at any time and call her up one day. We're ready to go the next day. I appreciate yeah. that. So thank you very much. I am Mr. Pierre. She is a fabulous Miss Blackwell. And this has been another mm-hmm. Chronicles of Mr. Thank you for listening. And we out. <laughs>